I have an adventure every day here and I'm just so far behind. I am backlogged in adventures and little amazing moments of the day and things that astound me in ways that have grown exponentially. And you know when people talk about like, oh, it's like you have to do the difficult work. You have to do like, you know, if you really want to change, you have to do the difficult work. And I've heard that for so long and I'm like, I don't know what that means. It's like now I finally know what that actually means. <laughs> I know what it means. It's like, oh my God, I'd rather do anything on this planet than confront this person. Or, oh my God, I would rather do anything than care for myself properly this weekend. Or um, set a boundary with this person. Or like, whatever it is. But it's like, oh man, you just gotta step. You just gotta do it. It reminds me of um, either camping or being on the farm or being at summer camp at night and having to go pee in the middle of the night. And to this day, I'm still scared of the woods at night, which is really disappointing to me because I've spent so much time in the woods. I've spent so much time in the woods at night. You think I'd be over it, but no, I just get the heebie-jeebies and I just, I don't know what it is. Maybe something happened to me in the woods at night in a previous life. I don't know. But it's like, oh, I try to psych myself up and you just finally got to push. You just got to take that step out into the dark. And once you take that first step, the next step is easier. I just want to talk about a couple of magical moments I've had over the past couple of days. Oh my God. I took out the final boss in my people-pleasing journey in my life at 40, which was my Mexican landlady. And I could tell from the beginning that this woman was hiding something, you know, oh, I had so many signs, I'm writing all about it, um, but then she even seemed to get, you know, they had a real push for the, you know what, the rooster cloths here in Mexico, so a bunch of people were running out, lining up, and after that, she showed up with a, um, now this is just a hypothesis, because this is all happened around the same time, so I don't know. But after that, she showed up with um, Bell's palsy of the face, so that one side of her face was pulled into this sneer, which even added to her effect. Anyway, I had to face that final boss, and I was we were fighting on texting, and she was just going crazy on me like I've never seen in my life. And I was really supported by... Um, some other girlfriends I have here, a ton of my Mex my local Mexican friends were like behind me. They're like, you fight this. Um, I had like one or two that were like, she might be an arco. Don't piss her off. Um, and then my Canadian friends were like, girl, that's what they do. Like, this has happened to me a million times. They start going crazy on you to try and make you scared to show up on the final day. And then you just like, ah. Uh, is my mental health worth it? Is it going to be physical dangerous? And you just don't do it. And that was what I was going to do. But the day of, when I was supposed to meet her there at 8 a.m., I woke up. Somebody had sent me a message on Facebook because I'd been posting in some of the groups, like, does anyone know this is normal for a landlord to ask this and do this? And they're all like, no, don't do it. Blah, blah, blah. They're all like freaking out. But someone sent me a message and was like, you have to fight this, you can go here, you can go there, like, the landlords are starting to become scummy, and, like, weird things are happening, like, don't just let it happen, because it will make things worse for everyone, and I was like, you know what, you're right, and then my neighbor, in my same building, sent me this beautiful Spanish poem about being infinite, and how I'm not small, but large, and I contain multitudes, and it was so cute, and so beautiful, he just wanted to, like, inspire me, because he knew what I was going through. Like, I had so much support that I could cry thinking about it. And my neighbor showed up without being asked. Like, I told him all the information, and he, like, doggedly, you know, he was like, well, I really hate seeing injustice. You tell me when you'll be there, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I found that, like, with my move, there were people who were like, oh, yeah, I'll be there. I'm going to help you. I'll be there. I'm going to help you. But none of them like really kind of showed up the ones who really wanted to help were asking me details they were giving me their schedule they're like when are you going to be doing this here's what i have available 
and like, you know, offering, you know, and it really helped me because sometimes I don't know how to support other people in that kind of a way, basically because it wasn't modeled for me my entire life. And I know it sounds like, what? Who doesn't know that? Like, I remember when I had a roommate in my 20s, I really cared for her a lot. She was in the hospital for like a few days. And I sent her some texts um, asking about her, like her friends, her family were there, whatever. I was like, don't worry, I'll take care of blah, blah, blah at the house, yada, yada. And we were just chit-chatting, whatever. And then when she came back from the hospital, I bought her some, I had some flowers waiting there for her. She was mad that I didn't come to the hospital to see her. And I could not for the life of me understand this. And to this day, I still don't know if it was appropriate like for her to be upset about that to me it still seems kind of minor and petty but I could be wrong because I never really really had people come to the hospital for me so many times like even as a kid I went through surgery by myself you know woke up after surgery by myself so many times as an adult you know my heart my heart surgeries the additional surgeries I had after that that I haven't talked about on the internet I went through all these literally by myself. Um, Sometimes I would be talking to some of my friends on text. Some of them are like a couple times, it was like famous YouTubers who lived in other countries who were friends of mine and I was just chatting with them and they were supporting me and offering to send me stuff. Um, Another one is a famous YouTuber from Edmonton who actually showed up, he brought me stuff. He put groceries in my fridge. I always remember him for that. We had the most amazing talk that night when he came over to my house, too. And he's like, well, you can think of me like a brother now. Because he knew my brother. He used to work with him. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. I faced the final loss, which, which is my landlord. And now I have a new face. It reminds me of... Um, and I have to tell you, there's a lot of shows that I like that I've watched in the past where the entire plot line and what's going on, I'm going to be honest, it goes over my head, okay? It, it does, like, even Lord of the Rings, even Game of Thrones, like, I know some of the main plot points, but if you ask me, like, generally what's happening and what families are with who and what's going on, like, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just like, the guy got his tongue cut out and... The dragons are coming, and like this, I just know like these basic <laughs> childlike elements of the plot. Um, but um, where was I going with this? <laughs> oh, hold on, I got a cough. <coughs> There's lots of dust in my new apartment, like um, renovation dust from like painting and stuff like that. So. Um, I was talking about how I don't know about plot points, and, oh yeah, so in the Game of Thrones, there was the girl Arya, she met the man with no face or something, and she kept getting different faces, different masks, she could switch and stuff like that. Do I know the meaning? And I tried to understand it. I did not get it. It went over my head. Like, I'm really good at understanding metaphors and allegories, but I did not understand that. If someone gets what's going on with that, please let me know. However, I feel like because I defeated this final boss, and by the way, this boss wasn't just the landlady. This boss was the version of me who needed people to like, approve of me more then I needed dignity, self-respect, or standing up for what I wanted. That was my final boss. That version of me. I had to defeat that person and show up and be ashamedly like, yep, I'm here for my money and I don't care if you don't like it. That's what I had to do. I actually felt guilty the day before. And I remember trying to in my mind, tally up the things that she'd done for me to justify giving her the deposit, you know, because she told me how to get to a beach one time that was really nice, or how she helped me bring my suitcase upstairs the first day in my mind. I'm like, okay, can these things add up to that deposit? And even during the checkout 
process when she was like counting the items that were in the apartment and their condition there was something about her like when she's like crystal fruit bowl like there was just something about that that just touched me in such a tender way for her you know and the past version of me would turn that into guilt the future version of me turned that into wow i am really a sweet person that i can have this tender private moment about this person caring about her crystal fruit bowl that she bought for me to have in this apartment when i first moved in even though she's acted this way to me you know that was really touching for me somehow and it's kind of like i could feel it wanting to turn into guilt and i'm like nope not happening and so now i have a new face i have a new mask i have a new aspect to who i am because i was able to connect with that side of myself instead of disowning it which is why i kept running into it over and over and over again when we don't see this side of ourselves when we're people pleasers and we refuse to see the ruthless self-serving side of ourselves we are also blind to it in others and that's why so many empathetic people pleasing you know decent good humans get taken and i got taken so many times i lost i lost and walked away from money to just letting it go to some of the most crooked self-serving and effed up people ever because i was like well you know whatever um so yeah and today i just feel completely different and i started mean mugging <laughs> which is new to me because i have what you might call resting dreamy romantic face <laughs> um or even resting sadness face i have a resting face that's like i'm really sweet and open come talk to me or fuck me over if you feel like it it'll be fine that's the kind of face i have but i also have a face that has this like level of mischief curiosity sparkle in the eyes i look turned on to life so i'm going to give myself that um but generally i've found that just kind of makes you a victim and I don't know if it's a Mexico thing or if it's the city I'm in in Mexico, but a lot of the women walk around with mean bugs. And I don't want to, I don't want to be too much of a mean mug because I think it will affect my face. Like as in, here's the thing, as you age, I feel like you're, you start to have the face that you've earned through your personality over the years. And recently I noticed that my face looks really sad if I don't do anything about it. And that breaks my heart because I have been so sad, lonely, and disappointed so many times throughout my life that, yeah, my face will naturally kind of fall into that look sometimes. And that breaks my heart. Um, so what I have been doing lately is affecting a mean mug which is I kind of squint my eyes down and I let the rest of my face kind of fall slack and I set my jaw a bit. So people, in my mind, they may think twice. You know, they're not going to look at me and be like, oh yeah, that's the one I'm going to go, whatever it is. I had an old man come up to me last week and tell me something. And I was like, what did he say? And I'm like, uh, I try to hear it again. I'm like, no, I still don't understand it. So I remembered one word that he said and I Googled it and it translated to tasty. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I guess it wasn't something innocent, that damn old man. Anyway, yeah, so that's my new thing now. I feel like I have a new dimension to my personality and I'm really proud of it. Um, I had this other weird little thing this morning. I was going to brunch with my girlfriend, and I could easily take a cab across the city for $2. But what does this girl do? You know she tries to save a dollar fifty by taking the bus. It's because it's a bit of an adventure. It's fun. I don't know. I just... I've been taking cabs everywhere lately. and I don't know. I like taking the bus, and I like saving money. 
<laughs> Although I know I'm being ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I waited for the bus. He had to signal to the bus if he wanted to stop for you. The bus driver ignored me, continued on to the stop up ahead. I was dressed, I wouldn't say to the nines, but kind of to the nines. And I looked really cute and well put together and polished to go meet my girlfriend for brunch in the rainforest. But what did I do when this bus stopped at the light? I picked up my pants, because they were kind of long, and I ran. And I remember my body just did it instinctively, bounding along like a little antelope, these tall, high leaps. And I was going fast, and I'm like, man, I am so impressed with myself. This girl with a heart condition, this girl who should have been in a wheelchair at age 10, look at me now. And the doors on the bus are like open, they don't actually close. So I <laughs> bounded over there, hopped on the bus, and I said, Hola. <laughs> and this guy looked so unimpressed. He was so, you know, self righteous to blow pa- past me on the at the bus stop. I don't know why. Maybe I was in the wrong spot. It's possible. I don't know. Uh, but some of the bus drivers here are super grumpy and they just like leave people. I see them do it all the time. I try to yell at them, hey, stop, but they don't do it. Anyway, so yeah. It was great. And then I had a wonderful game night with my new friends. And they really inspire me as a couple. You know, like, they're so hardworking. They have the most beautiful, well-kept house I've ever seen. They have a 10 years long relationship that started um, as best friends in the same field of work of biology. And now they do these kind of like wellness, holistic treatments out of their house and they work together and the man is like really beautiful really smart bilingual he's got this like he's like this very masculine he's a Taurus he's got this steady powerful constant vibe to him that I'm just